Thank you so much, Esther and uh, Abraham came into my life two weeks ago. I, <laughs> uh, it's, it's amazing so far. And, uh, She's up to speed. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's just a YouTube video play on its own randomly, and uh, that's how it all started two weeks ago. So I do have two questions, but uh, I hope the first question I can explain it. Uh, you know, there's nothing random in this world. Uh, now I know. <laughs> I attracted. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so I I hope I can ask my question clearly and uh, without offending physical body and the non-physical body. So. I learned we're all eternal beings, and uh, we actually have everything we want already. So, um, it, it's, uh, learning that gave me a tremendous level of comfort. Um, and the uh, last event you mentioned, the life, the purpose of life is joyful expansion. Um, and uh, I'm wondering, what's the purpose of the expansion itself? Well, it's just inevitable. The purpose of it is eternalness. Because if there were not expansion, then there would not be more. But we already have everything we want. You're right. You have it, whether you know that you have it or not. But you're not enjoying it if you don't know it. That's why we always say it's joyful expansion because you're going to expand. Everyone is you come into this environment and you observe and you're doing all of this stuff without even knowing that you're doing it. And the law of attraction is responding to you, but it is so delicious when you understand it and you are directing your thoughts intentionally. And I have a, a thought. I don't know. Maybe it's a little bit strange um, because in other, the other part of ourselves, the other part of what say it again. The other part of ourselves, non-physical part right. of ourselves, we... The inner being part, yes. Yes, we, we have everything we need uh, already over there. So why did you come here? We are co-creating, right? But what is the purpose of the physical... Exactly. exactly. I'm almost uh, like, I'm wondering... Well, think about maybe it. Maybe we're bored over there. <laughs> we... <laughs> We miss the feeling of wanting. We miss the feeling. Don't go of... too far. When you find a flawed premise, don't run it into the ground. I felt like I want to stop you before far, yes. you get too much momentum going on that ridiculous okay. speculation. So I noticed that this morning, actually, I was like, I just got. You are an extension of source energy. You are a co-creative part, as you said, and as you know, of this non-physical energy. So think about the things that we've told you about your inner being today. Your inner being is pure positive energy, which means your inner being never focuses in a negative way. Well, the disadvantage of that is that expansion doesn't come from that. Expansion comes from the part of non-physical that is you that came into an environment where you were exploring, where you know what you don't want, which launches the rocket of desire about what you do want. So you are in your physical form, the primary reason for the expansion of the entire universe. Your inner being said, we will remain here while you go forward and you mix it up and you find things that you don't like. And you, at the same time that you find things that you don't like, will calibrate things that you do want. You will find movement and expansion out of what's there. And when you find it, we will focus with you on the new expansion that you have found. And we will hold steady to that. And we will feel the exhilaration, not boredom. It is not boring. We will feel the exhilaration of your new discovery. And we will hold that steady, holding the signal that the law of attraction will draw you to. And you will experience the exhilaration of joining yourself in that new expansion. You know how when you feel thrilled with something, when love just washes over you or appreciation just washes over you, that's you coming into the way we all are feeling in that moment. You never experience a positive emotion that is only yours. It is your recognition of us that is the reason for the feeling. Just like negative emotion is how you feel when you're pinched off, you see. Nothing boring going on here. Can I have one more question real yeah. quick? So I have two daughters. It's about uh, parenting. This is amazing, but how do I introduce this to my young children? Oh, do I need to? You don't need to because they intuitively know it. Just don't get in their way. 
so uh, specific plants like my they love eat candy. If I let them, they can eat candy all day long. They will make them <laughs> make them happy. What do I do? Just one example. Well, you're like most people who don't want to accept from us what we say. So you take the strongest thing that comes up the most, like something that candy. We can't compete with candy. <laughs> Let's calibrate it. Situation. My children want candy. They want candy. They want candy. They want candy all the time. They would do all the candy that I would give them. You don't know that because you've never let them have very much candy. So you don't know how absurd it would get to them. And at what point that they would say, can I have a sandwich? <laughs> so you're starting with a flawed premise, first of all. But let's say that they seem to want more and more candy and you've decided that you're going to not get in their way. Well, by not getting in their way, we don't mean pull them back when the train is going to run over them. We don't mean keep them in as much well-being as you can. That's not what we're talking about. When we say don't get in the way, we mean don't trample their desire with old beliefs that don't have anything to do with them. That's what we mean by don't get in their way. We don't mean let them drink gasoline just to find out what it's like. We don't mean anything absurd like that. We mean, don't get in their vibrational way. We mean, believe in them as much as they believe in them. We mean you do your best to stay in this high rise place so that you're calling them upward. Don't let your worry call them downward. Children are naturally feeling good. And when a parent worries about them, you call them down. Never call them down. Make sure that you are tuned in, tapped in, turned on so that you're believing in them. And when you're tuned in, the perfect words will flow forth from you. So you heard all of that. You all heard that. That was really good. So, so now let's calibrate this. Let's say that you've decided to not be so controlling through action. You've decided that you're going to uplift them through your belief in their good life that they are living and in their value and in their blessedness and in their worthiness and in life being lovely for them. Those are the thoughts you think. Those are the thoughts you want to think. But let's say that you watch TV and you hear about the coronavirus and you hear about the rapes in the neighborhood and the things that are going on. And so it's hard for you to stay calibrated to that when there's so many other things that you could calibrate to, but you've decided that you're going to do a better job of feeling good yourself. And so you decide that you're going to let loose of some physical action control and you're going to do more of your controlling through love and appreciation and alignment. So they say, can I have some candy? And you say, yes. And they say, can I have some more candy? And you say, if you want it. And let's say that they are so out of their minds in disbelief that you're letting them have candy because they have not ever been allowed candy, let alone all of this candy that they've become little gorgers of it for a while they're really going crazy with it and so now you've got a situation and your situation is they're eating too much candy and I'm controverted I'm contradicted within myself because I think as a mother it is my job to protect them from things that aren't good for them and now I'm just letting them go ahead and learn for themselves I really like it better when they just take my word for it. No, that's not good for you. But here's something we really powerfully want to say to all parents. Don't get between your children and their desires. Because when you get between your children and their desires, you're fighting with their inner being who's rooting for their desires. Did you follow that? You can't win that battle. You can't win that battle when they hook up with their inner being. Maybe they want to be a rock star. Maybe they want to be a singer. Maybe they want to be whatever they want to be. Don't get between them and their desire because their inner being is rooting for them and assisting them. And so what happens to parents that do that is you get stronger and you try to do more with action and you won't win. You'll break down. Your body will break down. Your relationships will break down. It won't work. Don't get between them and their desire. So if they have a desire and you allow them to flow with it, you know what happens? If they eat more candy than they feel good with, their desire will shift to something else. The thing that we want all parents to understand is that you didn't come to live your children's lives and you didn't come to think everything for them. You came to give them an avenue into life and of course to keep trains from running over them and things like that. But you didn't come to think their thoughts. 
you came to think your thoughts about them and if you really want to help them the thoughts you will think about them will be really uplifting positive thoughts you see and what you'll start to notice is when you are in sync with their inner being that's the best thing that you could do it's like you're the satellite dish that's beamed down the best of them and they will come to expect good things to come to them that's the best parenting that you could do and when they get out of whack or when you get out of whack when you're not feeling good say to your children I don't feel good and it's because of what I've been thinking and I'm just gonna go into another room for a little while and I'm gonna find some thoughts that feel better and when I get feeling better I'll be back and then go and get feeling better and come back and then you will have demonstrated to them how life really works but when you yell at your children don't you know I love you they're confused because that word and how you feel don't seem like the same thing at all you see and so parenting is easy when you parent from your vortex you see and your children are so much more likely to meet you in the vortex because that's where they hang out mostly if you find children not in the vortex they've been trained out by parents who have consistently not been in the vortex